Our planet is on fire. From the Amazon to Australia, from California to the Congo. We are facing a planetary emergency that requires immediate and urgent action. We all watched in horror this summer when we saw the Amazon ablaze. This is what it looks like. Over seven million hectares of rainforest have burned in the Brazilian Amazon alone. Over four million in Bolivia. And combined in the entire region, the amount of devastation is upwards of 44 million soccer fields. This is devastating. And it's not an accident. While the wildfires in Australia are devastating, the fires in the Amazon are not wildfires. They are intentionally being set by criminal arson, by racist and political rhetoric by the president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro. The Amazon Basin is the world's largest and most biodiverse tropical rainforest. It is so large, if you were to put the Amazon Basin on the face of the full moon, that is how large it is. Most of us know that the Amazon also has the largest river on the planet. What you probably don't know is that there are rivers in the sky called the flying rivers or the atmospheric rivers. These rivers are three times larger than the actual Amazon River. And they are the heart pump of our global weather system. All of the water vapor that's lifted up by billions of trees throughout the Amazon create these flying rivers that irrigate the Amazon and as far south as Argentina, and as far north as California. The weather system that is created by these flying rivers reaches the Rockies, reaches the Sierras, and when they're taken off course by deforestation and degradation, these flying rivers cause drought, floods, fires, when they're off course. So I'm not a scientist, I'm an activist, but I find this all amazing and incredible. And what I do know from the scientists, from the climate scientists, is that we need intact rainforest to maintain these flying rivers, to maintain climate stability. And the scientists just recently, in December, said, we're nearing the tipping point in the Amazon because of the deforestation, because of the degradation, which is twice as much as it was last year. That is a direct result of the attacks on the rainforest and indigenous peoples by the Brazilian government. The scientists have said clearly, if we continue at this rate, we will reach the tipping point, the tipping point of ecological collapse in the Amazon. What does that really mean? That means that the Amazon the moisture in the Amazon will dry up and turn into a tropical savanna. This is devastating, not only for the Amazon and all life in the Amazon, but for the entire planet and the future of humanity. The Amazon needs urgent protection now. What we need is a global treaty a global agreement by world governments to protect and defend the rainforest now. The Amazon is also home to over 400 distinct indigenous peoples. They protect the rainforest. They've been doing this for thousands of years. 
They are the best protectors of the Amazon. And they have called upon us to stand with them, to resist this destruction and show our solidarity. To prevent this, to prevent this destruction caused by industrial extraction, by industrial agribusiness, by oil and mining. That's what's causing the destruction and illegal deforestation of the Amazon. This is oil in the Amazon. Oil in the Amazon has caused a toxic legacy. I've seen it firsthand. Actually, when I was a student at UC Santa Barbara in 1995, I visited the Amazon for the first time, and I went to study plants. I wanted to be an ethnobotanist. And I walked the forest with indigenous peoples and learned from them and realized they are a living library. And then I saw what oil spills. I didn't even know there was oil in the Amazon. Oil in the Amazon has dumped millions, billions of gallons of toxic waste into the environment. And you would think that would be enough to stop it. But there are still plans and new plans every day for oil concessions in the Amazon. At a time of planetary emergency, at a time when we need to keep fossil fuels in the ground and be transitioning to renewable energy, the Amazon is the last place we need to be drilling for oil. But indigenous people, frontline communities, and allies are rising up in resistance to this destruction. And we are standing with them. We are standing with them to demand indigenous rights, to say, we need to protect the Amazon. We need to protect Mother Earth. We need to defend indigenous rights in our communities. And we need to demand climate justice. This is what we truly need around the world to protect our planet. And while it's devastating and daunting, it's also hopeful because these fires have ignited a new movement. They have ignited the fire inside of all of us to take action. They have ignited the youth. They've ignited women. They've ignited indigenous people to defend their lands. And this was all happening before. And this is what we've been trying to say for over 20 years. But now the world has seen these pictures. The world has seen the fires and are taking action. And it is enlightening and it's hopeful to see movements of people all around the planet who are saying, we want to act now for the Amazon. What can we do? Whether it be youth, whether it be activists taking direct action, whether it be uh, supporters and funders, whether it be celebrities, everyone is uniting to take action to defend the Amazon rainforest. We know who's responsible. It's governments, it's corporations, it's financiers. And they have names and they have addresses and we know where they are and we engage with them and we pressure them and we protest them. Companies like Costco and Walmart, they're carrying JBS meat, the meat that is directly related to destroying the Amazon. They're JP Morgan Chase, they're Santander. These are the banks that are funding the Amazon destruction and they're asset managers like BlackRock the biggest asset manager in the world that is funding climate destruction and fossil fuel. And a couple years ago, people would say, you're not going to make a dent in BlackRock. They're way too big. Well, just a few weeks ago, they announced sweeping policies to fundamentally change the way that they invest in climate. And just, and just a few days ago, they released another policy on agribusiness. And 
it's up to us to hold them accountable. You know, the words and the policies are the first step. And we want every other asset manager and bank to follow them. But if we don't keep the pressure on them, they will not do what they've committed to. So we need to keep up that pressure. We need to keep up the pressure to support the communities who are standing up for their forest, who are standing up for their lives, because it is about the forest and it's also about the lives of the people who are being not just threatened and attacked, but killed, like Paolo Paulino Wajajara. And so we're saying no more blood. We don't want a single drop more of indigenous blood spilled for profit and, and greed and destruction. We are uniting. We're building a movement for the Amazon, for Mother Earth, and for our future generations, for all future humanity. If we want life on this planet, we need to protect the Amazon rainforest. We need to protect all forests. We know that the majority of the biodiversity on this planet is in indigenous people's land, lands. And we know where the deforestation and destruction is, is happening. It's not on indigenous lands. So we need to stand with indigenous peoples to continue defending and protecting their lands, because that is defending and protecting life on this planet and humanity and future generations. So my hope is that we continue building this movement to unite the youth, women, indigenous people, frontline communities, the environmental movement, the social justice movement, to protect the Amazon, to protect Mother Earth, and all of us. You know, in 1962, President Kennedy had a moonshot idea that he was going to send man to the moon, and people thought he was crazy. Ten years later, the first astronauts reached the moon and showed us our living, breathing, blue and green Earth for the first time. And what we need to do today is remember that we only have one Earth, we only have one Amazon, and it needs urgent and immediate protection today. So we need that moonshot idea of protecting and restoring the Amazon rainforest. Like I mentioned before, we need a global treaty and a global agreement by world governments, by civil society, and a commitment by the world to protect the world's largest and most biodiverse rainforest. And we have to stand in solidarity with indigenous peoples who are protecting the lungs and the heart of our planet. So I'm calling upon all of you. Will you join us? Thank you.